stock images. They're everywhere, on websites, billboards, and let's not forget those oddly dramatic photos of people laughing with salad. But you know where you never really see them? Video games. Today, I want to change that to show that you can make a game without expensive art budgets and high-end graphic designers. I'm going to make a game with nothing but stock images, then get a professional artist to play my game and rate it 1 through 10. I'm also doing this in a game engine that I have never used before. This is going to be a huge mistake. Enjoy the video and consider subscribing if you like it. What we're going to make today is a shooter game. So for a first-person shooter, we need the gun you know it, it wouldn't be a shooter game if you couldn't like boo -boo. i don't actually play any shooter games so i don't know if that's how it looks but we need an enemy ammo pickups health pickups wall ceiling and floor i think with these seven images we should be able to make a first person shooter okay so we have our game project here and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go to shutterstock.com to search for the assets that we need for our game to start off i'm going to look up gun and then what we can do is take our crosshair here and just legally purchase it. And then let's take this image, cut it in half, cut out the crosshair. And there we go. This is perfect. Let's add the crosshair. So I'll make a new 3D scene and then I will make a UI. How do you freaking make a UI in Godot? Oh, I think we did it. Yes, there we go. So if we look up gun again, we can see if we can find something with like the angle that we're looking for. This one might be a little harder because most of these sprites are not at the correct angle for a video game. This is perfect. It might be facing toward you instead of pointing in the direction of your shot, which might not be ideal. But if you use enough of your imagination, this is a beautiful sprite to use for our gun. There we go. Oh, this, this is already amazing. I'm learning. Maybe. Now let's drag our gun into position. And there we go. Next is our enemy. There's no point in having a gun if there's nothing to use it on. Am I right? Please don't take that out of context. I don't know exactly what to search for for this, but I'm just gonna filter by photos and scroll until I find something that looks cool. You cannot shoot any of these in a video game or not you'd be put on a, like a watch list and a dog bro how dare this website suggest any of these elon musk though you know you can make an argument for that oh perfect we have found it i don't think there's anything more scary than a shark i'm sorry PETA, but i think it'll have to do so now that we have a sprite for our enemy what i'm gonna do is get them working in game but before we can have enemies, we kind of need to have a player that can shoot. So what I'm gonna do first is implement the player logic in game. So what I'm gonna do is create a new character body 3D, and this will be a capsule. And then what I'm gonna do is attach a script to our player, and then I'm going to borrow some code from another project. And by borrow code, I mean just completely take all of it. All right, now we can move around as our player, but when you try and shoot, nothing happens. So the next step is we need to make our gun have the ability to shoot. We should add a bullet spray. This is perfect. Wait, this one doesn't even have a watermark. What? Yo, wait. I think we may have actually found a way to completely rob this website. I don't want to go to jail, so let's just use this version. Can you make like a public function in Gendo? You know it's bad when you're on kidscancode.org. We did it. We wrote four lines of Gendo code. It only took me like an hour. My my good old friend, chat GPT. I'm a professional. Let's see if it works. There we go. Okay. That seems like a pretty good hitbox to me. Okay, so what I want to do is go to project. Add a new action called shoot assign shoot to mouse click and now if input is action pressed shoot then shoot and now in game if you click the mouse button you should be able to shoot a beautiful stock image bullet it's gonna work now trust me guys it's gonna work now it's gonna work, it's gonna work, it's gonna work, it's gonna work now, it's gonna work now. Yes! We can finally shoot bullet. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe that it's a little bit, a little bit off. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh my gosh, this is, this is beautiful. Wow, I am really bad at writing code. Why is it? 
Why are they going this direction when I'm shooting in this direction? If you do self.translate and then you do like negative transform.basis.z, I think that's the issue. I think what I could do instead is do like, I'll do a new vector this, I think. Am I actually a genius? Yes, let's go! Guys, I'm the greatest Godot programmer in the world, and it only took me two hours. You can like spell words. Do you guys see that? Subscribe. So now that we can shoot, we need something to shoot at. First, I should add a collision shape 3D. There we go. And then, beautiful. Okay, our enemy has a collider. And the reason I do that is because when our enemy enters the area of a bullet, the enemy object will be deleted. In other words, when you shoot an enemy, it dies. Its basic behavior will be it just moves toward the player. So what I'm gonna do is in my game scene, I'm gonna drag in my enemy scene. Oh, he's kind of tiny, isn't he? And now, in theory, when I shoot this shark, it should get destroyed. Let's see if it works. Wait, it got deleted, but I think it got deleted like too soon. I don't know. I think the bullet is like too thick or something. Wait, I think the bullet hitbox is weird. I should actually maybe put like two seconds of effort into making it not terrible. Or maybe the bullets are just too big. It's very fast now. Pew, 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 pew. And now when you shoot the enemy, it should get deleted. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> Finally, so the next thing I want to do is just add very simple behavior to the enemy that makes it constantly move toward the player. And I guess I'll copy the bullet code actually. Now, when I run the game, the enemy should move toward the player. Finally, it's so beautiful. But one major thing that is missing is when the enemy touches you, you need to die. So that should hopefully be pretty easy. And I keep saying that and it never is. So maybe I should shut up at this point. Now, when the enemy touches the player, the game should restart. Please, please, please. Okay. Oh my God, okay. It actually works. You can finally die. The next thing I want to do is make it so that there is more than one enemy. I'm going to add my enemy to a group called enemy. And then in my bullets, instead of saying body.name, I'll say like body is in group enemy. That way, no matter how many enemies we have in a scene, the bullets will still affect every enemy. Please work, please work, please work. Yes, it works. It actually works. Let's see if new enemies spawn. I don't see any. Let me change the node type of enemy spawner. Oh my god, it's working! We have enemies, we have so many enemies all around us. Ah! Okay, okay, okay. This is scary, this is scary, this is scary, this is scary, this is scary. In our player thing, I'll just quickly say like timer is less than zero. I shoot timer equals two. Timer minus equals delta. Var timer floats equals two when you start. And now you should only be able to shoot every two seconds. Yeah, that's a bit more balanced. I think it is time to find some images for our wall, ceiling, and floor. This is perfect. This is absolutely beautiful. I guess I can duplicate this, rotate it, and then I want to apply a texture to it. Oh, yes, it's beautiful. It's just, uh, it's like upside down and flipped, so nothing, nothing a little genius can't fix. There we go. Our wall is in the game. And then I need to, like, shrink it a bit, I think. This is perfect. Perfect. So we have one wall and I'm just gonna go and duplicate it. And now when I run the game We are in a beautiful beautiful environment now. Now we need a ceiling and a floor Some of these would make for like genuinely good game textures to be honest Like this is like actually a good game texture. So I say we go with it I will simply drag my floor onto my floor. But then the cool thing about this texture is that we can make it repeat endlessly. So it'll look even better. Um, I'm gonna pretend like I know how to do this when I do not at all. 
Oh my gosh, we did it. Let's see how our floor looks in game. Oh, this is this is absolutely amazing. Our game is coming along. All right, and now we just need a ceiling. Oh, this, guys, this is absolutely perfect. Oh, it's amazing. Okay, I tweaked the environment settings a bit, and now we have a nice, bright interior. I'm going to limit your ammo and then scatter like ammo packs that randomly spawn in. And then if you collect an ammo pack, you get more ammo. We, we get to go back to our UI. Yeah, I love, I love UI. We have to add a label now. So I'm gonna add a new thing called a label and our label is gonna say ammo five out of five. All right, so now when I run this, I have my ammo at the top. Okay, so wall is done, boom. Ceiling is done, boom. And floor is done, boom. We need an image for our ammo pickup. If I had to imagine what an ammo pickup would look like in real life, it would probably be something like this. I don't think we necessarily need a rigid body. So for my crate, what I'm gonna do is instead I'm going to do a area 3D, and our area 3D is gonna have a collision shape 3D, and then our collision shape 3D is going to be a box, and then our node 3D is going to have a sprite 3D, and then our sprite 3D is going to have a crate sprite, and then our crate sprite is going to be scaled down just a bit, I would say, let's say 0.5, and then I'm not gonna scale the area 3D itself, but I'm gonna scale the collision shape. There we go, now we have a collider for our crate. I guess because our crate has an area 3D, we can simply say area entered body. Um, I think I can copy what I did for a bullet. If body name equals player, then I will delete the crate. I'll say a crate will spawn every 10 seconds. So now ammo crates should spawn. When you collect one, they'll get deleted, I think, but nothing will happen besides that. But just a test. Oh, I found an ammo crate. All right, I'm gonna try and collect it. If I run into it, you can collect them. Okay, I'm going to make a custom signal. Don't know how to do that though. I'm gonna go to my Godot project and then I'm going to, on my player, make a new integer called ammo count. And by default, it will be five. And then when you shoot, I will say ammo count minus equals one. I'm gonna make a function called the reload and reload will simply set ammo count equal to five. And then in my crate, I'll say body dot reload. I guess everything is good now. I just need to connect it to the UI of our scene. Uh, the way to do that is I actually have no idea. Oh, it's so easy. That's so easy. It's a little bit of hard coded, but it works doesn't work. Okay, watch this. So we have five out of five ammo. And when I shoot, now it's four out of five. So then if I run out of ammo, boom, 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 boom. I can't shoot anymore because I have zero out of five ammo. So what I have to do is I have to wait for an ammo crate to spawn while I dodge these sharks. It's actually kind of kind of difficult. Okay, okay. Oh, it's over there. It's over there. And I get the ammo crate. I five. Then boom, boom. There we go. Our game is basically complete. But the last thing we need is when you die, we need a proper game over screen. This one is absolutely perfect. We add a text direct. There we go. And I'm actually gonna also add a quick little label that says like R to retry or something. There we go. A beautiful game over screen. I'm so excited. We're gonna have a beautiful game over screen and then we're gonna be done. And now when I run the game, if you die, it should load the beautiful Game over. Somehow this crashed the game. All right, and now when you run into an enemy, the beautiful game over screen should be loaded. And there we go. Our game is finally complete. And then when you press R, the game restarts. There we go. We have successfully made a game using only stock images. I think it's absolutely beautiful, but now it is time to get a professional artist to play through our game and rate its visuals from one to 10. This is probably gonna end very, very badly. Today, I'm gonna be playing the best game ever with awesome graphics, professionally made, Grau fix to Sir Gugus, the artistic visionary. By harnessing the power of stock images, I have aspired to birth the most beautiful game in existence. I now seek the critique only such a only a master such as yourself can offer, and humbly invite your unparalleled eye to pierce through its essence and bestow a rating. With deep reverence and sincere admiration, Polymars. We're gonna jump in. I'm a little intimidated. I have critiqued a lot of art in my day, but this feels like the ultimate challenge. So I love the fact that it's Godot because, uh, hey, it supports artists and it's um, open source. Oh, 
Oh no. The lack of audio is disturbing. <laughs> Can I put the, is there a full screen button? Wait, I only have five ammo. First and foremost, I, I really like the atmosphere. I feel like the floor uh, and the fan material, it's, it's kind of farmhouse, kind of Scandinavian. What's not nice is the lack of ammo. <laughs> Did I tell you I hate sharks? <laughs> I also think it's quite an interesting perspective to have a gun at the bottom right pointing at me. It makes me feel like, am I the shark? Am I doing the right thing? <laughs> I love the bullets. There's not much to say. I think the silence speaks for itself. Oh, man. I feel like this, this game is cruel. You get extra ammo. It's like, nope. Five max. Uh, another really interesting thing. I like the fact that you put in white Converse here at the bottom. Uh, very aesthetic. I personally wear white Converse exclusively. Another really interesting observation I have here is the use of Gestalt theory. So it's basically the, like how to make nice aesthetic looking art. And uh, it's broken down to these different phases. But one of them is proximity, where if you have a bunch of items grouped together, uh, that they feel like one big unit. And I really see that right now with the... <laughs> with all these uh, lovely sharks gathered together. Another really interesting thing too that you see, you know, maybe with like a more Picasso type painting is the perspective on this fan. It's it's a little impressionistic, you know, it's not, it's not too hung up on having the accurate details. And really this room just feels like an advertisement for a website. I, I can't tell you which website. We're gonna succumb to the sharks. Oh, I don't like... Oh, okay, I like what you got here because you're just you're trying to represent everyone, you know. You're trying to represent the PC gamers, the gamer girls out there. Overall, I think it's uh, I think it's a really unique game. One thing I will say about art, and this this applies to any art style you use, art can actually look somewhat decent if you're consistent about it. In a weird sort of way, this game is consistent about its. Let's describe the. The style is brutalism. In a sense, it's a good art style. That said, I, I would have to rate this game five apples out of 12 because even though the color's nice, you know, sharks are just terrifying. People don't like sharks. I think that's really the biggest drawback. Then again, a shark is probably the best thing you could have chosen for this. But maybe a dinosaur. I feel like that's more period appropriate with the with this handgun image. But five apples out of 12, that's, pretty, that's a pretty high rating in my book. The worst part about this is I'm stuck. I can't get out. Oh no!